Hey everyone, it's Wilson from Just Insights, and in this video, I'll be covering what is user retention, why is user retention important, and a bunch of user retention strategies that actually work that you can apply to your business, your company, or your startup. Uh, again, you can check out JustInsights.com for the easiest ways to receive customer feedback across all different types of platforms. Well, let's get this thing started. So, what is the main problem nowadays, right? One of the main problems nowadays is that marketers and product managers and founders are too, uh, how should I say, they're too into the growth process where they only worry about user acquisition. So they only care about these lead magnets, how do I get more user sign up, but there's way more than that. Like user retention is one of the biggest things that you, you should be keeping in mind when it comes to growth because it's something that contributes to the long term of your business, contributes directly to your customer's lifetime value, right? So there's just too many companies nowadays. They, they come out with these like ebooks, free ebooks, um, you know, these uh, really link baiting type of title blog posts, and they just try to capture too many lead magnets and try to get leads. But they don't convert to users. And even if you force them to convert to users, without a good user retention strategy or without actually tweaking things, you won't be able to um, kind of keep them loyal for long, right? You want these customers to be your advocate and then refer their buddies to your platform or your product or service as well, right? Uh, another problem is that companies, they just aren't speaking with their customers. They aren't listening to their customers and they aren't talking to them. You know, customer feedback is super important because that is what drives your business. Customers are the ones that are paying you. So you have to listen to what their concerns are, what features they want to build. Instead of guessing and, and building stuff that you don't, that you feel that your, your users might like, you might as well ask them and listen to their feedback, right? That is super important. And that's something that all startups and businesses need to do in order to, you know, grow a very big business. There isn't a successful entrepreneur that would, would tell you to not listen to your customers. You know, they will always tell you, listen to your customers and because uh, your customers are pretty much the ones that are paying you and they're driving your growth. So customers equal growth. Customer feedback, very important, and that equals growth, right? Loyal customers never come overnight. It takes a lot of time, and the user retention process takes a lot of tweaking. This starts with engaging with users and talking to your users. Remember, it all goes back to customer feedback. So why user retention? You know, why is it so important? You know, according to a research report um, by HBR, increasing customer retention rates by 5% increases your profit by 25 to 95%. That is huge. So that means it costs a lot more to acquire a new customer than it does to retain one, right? So instead of spending all these money and calculating your user acquisition costs on like these advertising channels or these outbound sales channels, just being able to retain a user will save you a lot more money in the long run. And plus, they can refer more friends to your platform and product or service. And that's like a freebie right there. You don't even have to spend any acquisition costs. So it's super important to keep your user acquisition up. Uh, happy customers most likely to stick around longer. And that also means that they're going to be spending more money with you. They're the ones that's going to be upgrading. They're the ones that's going to be you know, buying and listening to your upsells. So user retention is super important. A retained happy customer is more likely to refer you to the friends, coworkers, which will lower your cost of growth, just like I mentioned at first, right? A happy customer, a loyal customer will always tell the friends about you and they'll be your advocate. You know, a good user retention rate will also mean that your customer lifetime value will be much higher as well. So with good user retention, you have more and more profit coming in. These are the people that will be probably paying for your annual plans. They'll probably be paying for all the upgrades. They're the ones that go be around, and that means that your profit will continue to soar and your revenue will continue to soar as well, right? So one of the first things you need to start doing is in order to, I mean, in order to increase your user retention rate is simply, like I said, listening to your customers. Listening to your customers is a requirement for building the ultimate product. If you're trying to build a product that everyone loves, you're trying to build a product that your users will love and will come back and use again and again and again and be an advocate for, be the ambassador for, you need to be able to listen to their, their needs. You know, whether they're complimenting you or they're, they're being frustrated at a feature that isn't working, it doesn't matter what it is, you still have to listen to them. So a really great example of this is uh, one of this famous food blogger 
Uh, her name is Lacey, and the food blog is called A Sweet Pea Chef. Uh, her story goes that she tried uh, writing a lot of blog posts related to food, and she was getting subscribers here and there. Uh, but they weren't really engaged people, or they, they would never, never, never view more than one page of her content. So these, uh, what happens is that the bounce rate goes up, you know, users don't come back, and you don't really build a, a brand, and you don't make any money, right? So uh, what she did was, instead of guessing what her customers want, she actually surveyed them. And that is super important. She sent out a survey uh, asking all her email subscribers, you know, what content would you like to read? What, what content should I be writing? You know, what do you find useful? How do you think about the last content that I published? And all these simple one-click survey questions contributed to her getting a better analyst of, you know, what, what her uh, audience really wants to see her write. And then she was able to put up more like ebooks and, you know, like these recipe books uh, based on what the audience said. So this is super important. And, you know, customer feedback goes hand to hand when it comes to content marketing. So anytime you're producing content, you want to listen to what your customers like and what they don't like, right? Another great example is uh, Neil Patel's blog, right? So Quick Sprouts is, is his main blog. I think his other blog is neilpatel.com. But um, we're talking about Quick Sprouts right here. Basically, they're, they're um, a blog and a kind of like academy site that teaches you everything about content marketing, startups, conversion rate optimization. It's an excellent blog. Check it out, quicksprouts.com. But uh, Neil Patel wanted to turn this uh, Quick Sprouts into a, a SaaS tool. So what did he do? And um, he actually surveyed a bunch of his, uh, his audience and asked them, uh, you know, would you pay for a social media product, a, a social media software? And people said, no, you know, they're not interested in growing the social media account. But then when he asked them, uh, would you be interested in paying for a product that helps you improve your content marketing? Everyone said yes. So from there on, he was able to find a product that he knew that there was already going to be buyers or at least interested buyers and that it was people that's going to be using his product. That is huge, right? So before he even built it, he already had this in his mind. And uh, that all goes back to listening to your customers. And how did Neil Patel do this? He just did it with a survey. Everyone that subscribed to his list, boom, it will automatically send out a survey with the email and he'll be able to get the feedback. So there's two ways of surveying. There's one, you can create a traditional survey, and then second, you can create a one-click survey. So here's a little uh, quick picture of the difference between a one-click survey versus a traditional survey. So uh, at, the, at the heart of Yes Insights, one of our goals is to be able to make surveys as easy as possible for people to answer so people don't even have to think, and it reduces the barrier of uh, you know, being able to send out a survey and getting uh, customer feedback. And basically, with a one-click survey, as you can tell right here, on the left side, you just pretty much embed uh, your survey into your, your email platform, maybe your intercoms so or your support widget, uh, maybe your blog article. It can go anywhere. You can embed it on any platform, any web, within your Gmail, within MailChimp, you know, ConvertKit, Infusionsoft, whatever you're using, HubSpot, anything. And it blends in directly with your email, so it matches all the font and everything, and it requires no additional code. So you just create a survey, copy, paste in the snippet, and you're good to go. You send out the survey, and boom, this is exactly how somebody would see it, you know, with just the option. They can click on it, and the response will be logged. It will be tracked. So it's very simple, and it usually has a lot higher response rate, usually anywhere uh, from 4 to 6 uh, X more, uh, more response rate compared to a traditional survey. And the traditional survey is usually those long form surveys where, oh, will you take a moment to, you know, rate my business? And you click on it, it goes to some other page, and you have to fill out some long ass form. It's something like that, right? It takes up a lot of time, it takes up a lot of effort, and uh, people, they get tired, they get annoyed, or they just get tired of seeing those emails, and they just don't do it, right? Whereas one click surveys, you get, you know, responses right away because. They don't have to think, and they can just click on a response. So it's super effective, and it uh, increases response rate. You can create one easily uh, if you just go set up an account at yesinsights.com. So the second thing you can do to increase your user retention is by engaging with your users, and this is very important. Intercom, you know, any type of these uh, software companies talk about engaging with your users very often, especially SaaS companies, right? So you have to chat with your users as often as possible. It's important to check in with your customers throughout their entire life cycle as a customer. 
but it's even more important to uh, start engaging with them from the very beginning. So if you offer like a free trial, uh, it's very important to start engaging throughout the trial and try to get them to convert into a paying customer. Then try to nurture them and keep engaging with them, keep checking in with them, and turning them into an advocate and long-term customer that will re refer to friends as well, right? So here's an uh, example of an email that, uh, that I took a screenshot of, of a perfect audience. So I signed up for a perfect audience running some uh, retargeting. And this guy named uh, Ryan from the customer success team reached out immediately. Uh, this could have been an automated email, but the fact that he personalized everything, he, he mentioned his name, you know, he mentioned who he was, maybe a few connected to the company. And then he also said, I noticed that, you know, you recently signed up for your free trial and I was checking if you have any questions regarding your campaign so far. So he's checking in. If there's any question, I can shoot him questions right away. And then he's like, you know what, I'm here to help. So he's always offering help. You know, great job, Ryan. Great way of engaging with your customers. Really good start. You know, um, and the second thing is make sure you're asking questions, right? So that's part of engaging with users. So checking in like how Ryan is doing works, but sometimes you won't even receive a response. Like for example, for me, I just viewed that email, but you know, there was nothing for me to say, so I didn't, didn't uh, respond back. So if you want to achieve the best results, you should add a combination of things. That includes introducing yourself, you know, maybe showing them more materials, or as well as uh, what I'm trying to talk about in this specific slide is asking questions. So uh, on the right side, you will see the onboarding, uh, not, not the onboarding email. This is the email that uh, we send on, I think it's the sixth day of our, of our free trial. So we have a seven day free trial, Yes Insights. And it says, hey, name, you know, so hey, Joseph or whatever. And then hope you're enjoying your trial. I just wanted to check in to see how you're doing. You know, here's a quick question for you. If you send surveys to your customers, are you happy with the number of customers who responded? This is super important because we ask this question because there's a lot of people that don't like using survey products like SurveyMonkey, etc. because they don't get enough response rates. So we want to know if they're actually getting it or if they're happy with the product, right? So we, we put three uh, responses for them, you know, very happy, it exceeded my expectations, or it's okay, it matched what I expected, or not happy at all, right? So, and then we say, thanks in advance for the feedback. If you need any help at all, just reply to this email and we'll get back to you in a jiffy. P.S. You're on day four of your seven-day trial. So not day six, it was day four, correct. And this is sent out by uh, Lenny, so my co-founder at Yes Insights. We have three goals when we're setting up a survey like this. Uh, the first one is that we want to generate a conversation, right? So when you ask a question, somebody's most more likely to respond than if you're just saying, hey, I'm here to introduce myself and I'm here to see if you have any questions. That's just offering help, right? Second thing uh, we, we want is that we want actionable feedback. So each time they click on a response, we're able to log the results and we'll ca we can look at the overall data to see what is going on, you know, how many people like a product, how can we tweak it, you know? And then the third thing is that we want to remind the user that Yes Insight actually exists. So our brand is still here and that we want to let them know that they signed up for it. And if they haven't been using it, you know, go back into your dashboard and start checking things and start creating surveys. The next thing that you can do to engage with more of your users is by providing more educational materials. So for example, right here, this one is definitely on the sixth day, right? So we say, hi, you know, Joseph, I hope things are going well so far. I know you must be thinking about what question to ask your customers and how to ask them so that you can get productive answers, right? We thought of a lot about that too. So we put some of our thoughts in this helpful blog post and then we link a blog post and then we say, this should give you some great ideas to get started. Cheers by Lenny, right? This is important because we're, we're sending them more and more educational materials. So we're educating them, we're building trust with them and then they'll go to our blog, they'll read our article and hopefully they'll read our other articles and they'll get more and more ideas. That, that way they understand our, our products some more. Now, when you're providing more educational materials, this does not necessarily have to be a blog post like how we did it. Uh, it could be anything. It could be like an ebook that you want to offer them a white paper, maybe even a case study or more use cases. You just want to make sure you send it. You know, or it could be a list of relevant blog posts. On the right side, you see here's an email I received from Zapier, from Wade, uh, who's the founder of Zapier. And, um, he goes like, hey, you know, I know you signed up. I think this was maybe on like, maybe one week after I signed up. He's like, hey, you know, I'm here to help. And um, once you get, uh, you might you might be having a hard time setting up your first zap. So this is a triggered email because I did not set up a new zap when I, after I signed up for the account. And it was over a week. 
So I guess they realized that they tagged me as an inactive user and they decided to send this email out, which is super smart, right? You can do the same with uh, surveys. You know, you can look, go through Intercom uh, or you can, whatever you're using, like Infusionsoft, and you figure out exactly which one of your users aren't active, which one of them aren't uh, reading your emails or they're not using your platform and you tag them and then you send them a survey asking them why they haven't do it. So this, is, this could all be done with Zapier through Yes Insights. Uh, but anyway, so back to the weight thing, he, he shows me a few examples. He's like, hey, you know, save type form entry to a Google spreadsheet, you know, create treadle card from Evernote. And what was the result? I actually clicked on the use this for the create treadle cards for Evernote. So it worked. This email worked and it got me going back to the Zapier platform, which increases their user engagement. Uh, one more thing. Uh, the next thing is that you have to make sure that you announce new feature updates. This is super important for user retention, right? You, most users don't notice when your product development actually slows down. So you and your product team haven't been putting out new stuff or you've been working on a big release. Most of them, they just won't know. But if things go quiet for too long, they'll, they'll be easily distracted when a competitor releases a new feature and that can slow down your growth, right? Or they can switch platforms and that's not what you want. You want to retain a customer. You want to increase user retention, not, not churn, right? You don't want to churn. So um, a good thing to do this is by just maybe writing a blog post. For example, uh, in my blog post, I mentioned that status page did a very good job with announcing new features, right? They keep their, their whole email newsletter updated. They keep their subscribers updated and they keep the audience updated, right? You can do this probably do a Slack. If you have a Slack community channel, like Buffer has a very famous Slack community channel, or you can do a like community outreach, right? Like you can go on, like, let's say, let's say for status page, they're developer tool. They can go on developer forums, they can go on Stack Overflow, and they can start posting, right? And then, of course, email outreach to your existing customers using, you know, maybe a newsletter, uh, a personal a personal reminder kind of thing, like how Ryan did it with Perfect Audience. Uh, or you can do something unique if it was a very requested feature from your audience. What you can do is that you can email everyone that requested that feature and be like, hey, we just released what you want. Surprise them, right? Make them happy. Right. Another thing that you can do to increase user retention is by offering a discount code or referral codes or just simply running a giveaway, right? So giveaways like gamification, and that works really well. So a really great example of this that I, um, that I pasted in right here is, uh, is uh, how Beer Metrics actually increased $14,000 in extra revenue for upselling the product, right? And basically, Bear Metrics has been trying to upsell uh, these annual packages to their users for years and things just weren't working, right? Like uh, things just, people just didn't want to buy, etc. So they tried something new. They tried doing like a, a, a discount code. It says, hey, Sally, we've been testing out some new pricing models for Bear Metrics. And instead of our usual two months free for switching to annual pricing, we're offering three months free for, uh, what is it, for free to a subset of customers. Would you be interested in that? Reply and let me know and I can add the right coupon to your account and make the switch to annual for you. Thanks so much for being a part of Bear Metrics. It means a lot to have folks like you on board. You know, Josh Pickford, very genius, genius technique. Uh, this engages with the user, lets them know that, hey, we're still thinking of you and we're only releasing this special offer of three months for free to a subset of customers. Notice he's a subset of customers. That is like super huge because it makes the user feel special, the customer feel special now, right? Now they're a loyal person. Um, you know, like, would you be interested in this? And instead of the two months, you get three months. And result, they have 14,000 in extra revenue plus, you know, a bunch of upsells. So it's a double win. Uh, one more thing that you want to do to increase user retention is by setting a really good foundation. So you want to make a killer first impression. You know, explain how your app works. You know, explain the story behind your startup. Explain the story behind your idea. You know, or maybe uh, what you can do is you can provide them with a resource on how to get started. You know, let them know that you're here to help. Like how Ryan did. Ryan, Ryan told me that uh, he was there to help me out. You know, if I need help setting up with my campaigns, and that they can reach out anytime if I ever need help. So he was offering help. That is super important, right? And engaging in an early conversation or sending like a warm greeting is very helpful. So this, uh, this thing that you're seeing right here on the screen is our welcome email. Uh, we're 100% transparent about our onboarding process. So uh, we're here to help as well, right? So my co-founder Lenny will say that I'm Lenny 
one of the co-founders of Yes Insights, and I want to thank you for signing up. We started Yes Insights with one simple idea, to make surveys quick and painless for your customers to answer. You'll be delighted at the number of responses you get on your first survey. If you have a second, we'd we'll love to know about the single biggest question that keeps you awake at night. You know, then we show them a question, and then we, uh, and we start asking them, right? So we ask them what this is uh, being set up by a one-click survey. And then we say, thanks. If you have any questions about getting started, just hit reply to this email. We'll point you to the right direction free of charge. So we're offering help. We're engaging with the customers. We're creating conversation. We, we, we eat our own dog food because we set up a one-click survey because we know these receive a lot of responses. And we're, we're, uh, we're getting user feedback and we're getting actionable feedback and uh, putting them on a really great journey. And hopefully they become a lifetime customer, right? Um, when, uh, and what are the results? is that everyone that opens this email, believe it or not, 50% of them actually respond by, I mean, actually clicks on the response. So they either respond to email or they click on the response. And that is super important because that shows that one-click surveys convert. And that's a very important metrics to us is that our product is actually useful. So, you know, thank you for watching. Uh, make sure you check out yesinsight.com if you're looking for uh, creating either one-click surveys, MPS surveys, or just getting feedbacks from the user in general because we're also coming out with a website widget. Um, it starts at $20 a month for the, for the personal plan. It's the simplest way for you to receive customer feedback across all platforms. So you can embed this in Infusionsoft, ConvertKit, MailChimp, Aweber, uh, you know, whatever you use, Get Response, Autopilot, set up your drip email campaigns, we work within Drip, so if you're offering a free educational course using Drip or Lead Pages, boom, we integrate. So we have a lot of integration set. Uh, we have the one click survey, like I mentioned, MPS survey, survey web widget, uh, it natively embeds on all platform. You don't need any type of coding. So you can set things up within like five minutes after you're creating an account and you don't it does not require any additional code. So you don't have to hit up your developer and be like, hey, help me install this, help me figure this out. We don't need any of that. If you need support, boom, we're always here 24 hours seven. Uh, this allows you to gain actionable feedback, increase your user engagement, increase your user retention, and it increases trial to pay conversion. So if you're a SaaS company, this is super important. Again, my name is Wilson Peng. You can follow me on Twitter at Wilson Peng8. Uh, make sure you check out this insights. So it's www.yesinsights.com and I hope you enjoyed this video about how to increase your user retention. Hope you um, learned something from it and hope you will have more strategies in the future for uh, increasing user retention and engagement. Thank you.